having the uh, Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014 meeting of the Board of Public Works. We're being taped by NCTV. Is there any public comment? <laughs> I want you to know that I admire the complexity of the job you do and the amount of time you put into it. I don't want you to take what I say as a personal affront, okay? I know I may have turned some people off at the last one. That's something I want to read here. There's certain things in life that just hit you the wrong way in the last meeting was one of them. The city budget director's presentation on enterprise fund charges on April 9th raises questions about fiduciary responsibility and possible conflict of interest by the Board of Public Works. Can the Board of Public Works, which is appointed by the mayor, look out for the financial interests of enterprise fund ratepayers with the same concern they have for the general fund and DPW? In a situation where the enterprise fund employees and equipment are used for snow plowing or other DPW projects, does the Board of Public Works represent the interest of the Department of Public Works or the enterprise fund ratepayers? In, in the fiscal year 2015 budget, the nonprofit sewer and water prize enterprise funds are assessed a payment in lieu of taxes of over $700,000 a year. Well, for a comparison, Smith College is only paying a pilot of $52,000 a year. Will a new stormwater enterprise fund be assessed and taxed on the value of the new pumping station and the value of other flood control structures and pay an equally high pilot? Is there an incentive for the Board of Public Works to challenge the pilot assessments since their use is questioned in Massachusetts Enterprise Fund Manual under General Laws, Chapter 44, Paragraph 53F and half. And in that it says, it must be noted that from a legal point of view, it's not at all clear that what extent a court would consider a payment to be in part of the actual cost of providing the service, and therefore an appropriate component of the enterprise fund's fee structure. All right. With an ever-increasing competition for municipal revenue, now may be the time for the Board of Public Works to divest its control of the existing enterprise funds and create independent boards to look after their interests and those of the ratepayers. All right. There's always been this presentation that what people are paying for water is a fee and not a tax. But now we're finding out that the fee includes a tax in the form of this payment in lieu of taxes. And it's a sizable chunk of money. And for some people, that just doesn't quite so well. Is that well, your question about comment? That's my two cents for today, yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'm going to send this down. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, Paul, um, in regard to the stormwater fund, um, there's no pilot in there. If, you know, we went through the details last time with Susan, and there, there is no pilot. I mean, I think, I think that Dick's comments are very, you know, they're thoughtful, but just, just in that regard, there's no pilot in that particular one. Not yet. Right. Yeah. This year, yes. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, approval for the minutes of the April 9th, 2014 Board of Public Works meeting. Mm -hmm. Approval. Second. Any comments? I, I did have some that were substantive, and I don't know if you had a chance to resolve them. Yep, I went over them with Anne Marie and corrected it. Okay. Yeah. And you got mine installed? I did, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of approval? Yes. 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 Y
So based on the last meeting we had on Wednesday, April 16th, we went through this uh, Water Enterprise Fund budget, and with it there's a recommendation for a 1.93% increase uh, to $5.58 for a new rate, up from $5.51. I mean $5.47, excuse me. And we all were here for a discussion except for MJ. Do you want to have any comment on that? No, I'd rather do them tell us. So. Okay. I, I have a general comment, and it's more for the public that's not here. Mm -hmm. And I, I think as we go through these budgets tonight, because we've worked on them so hard, mm -hmm. we probably aren't going to talk about them a lot mm -hmm. because our questions have been answered at other meetings. Mm -hmm. And I think the public should understand that we've had three dedicated board meetings for mm -hmm. the purpose of uh, reviewing the budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, we covered the, the much of the information at another regular board meeting. So this is our fifth uh, publicly um, held board meeting to cover the budgets and so it might appear to someone watching this tape for the first time that that we haven't spent much time on this but I just want people to understand that we have. But in fact there are tapes of the previous meetings where right. we have discussed this at length. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else want to make comments? So it's been proposed that we have a 1.93% increase in the water rates. I'll call those in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Set the FY 2015 sewer weights for all consumption billed after June 30th, 2014 for FY 2015, which we did also discuss on April the 16th. So um, out of the, that, <coughs> excuse me, those meetings came a recommendation of a 2.04% increase going from $5.96 to $6.08 or a 0.12 cent increase in the rates. Okay. Any discussion about that? Any further discussion about that? Michael? Um, another comment, I should have made this regarding the more appropriate for the water <coughs> the water rates um, but in both cases we're using some of our current funds to keep the rate increase at a relatively low level yes. and I think that should be known by anyone observing this meeting and that applies to the both the water and the sewer enterprise accounts and we, I'm going to reprise that when we get to solid waste enterprise fund because that will also mm -hmm. that was particularly right. relevant with that and MJ does that so we might want to discuss it but I think that's really critical we were very conscious of being careful about the rates okay all those in favor of the uh, two dollars the 12 cent increase for the um, FY 2015 sewer rates uh, I I know. Know. anybody opposed Approval of the FY 2015 general fund budget, which has a minor change. The change from our last meeting of uh, Wednesday, April 16th, was the mayor added an additional $25,000 to a line item in the O&M account for tree planting in the city. Well, I guess you can take that to the tree. So there's an increase. So the total budget uh, for FY 15 would be Two million six hundred thirty-two thousand three hundred and forty dollars for the general fund. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Approval. <coughs> Any opposed? Uh, approval of the FY 2015 solid waste enterprise budget. As I mentioned before, we had a long discussion about um, <coughs> the solid waste enterprise budget, and Chris was concerned because um, well, there are a lot of different issues brought up. But essentially, um, I'll let Jim sort of talk about this stuff. Like, um, you were concerned. <laughs> well, <never. laughs> that there was a there was a concern that rates were. Um, we wouldn't be able to see the changes that we wanted to see due to um, the pre-purchase of bags. 
so that we had wanted to increase the rate for the solid waste enterprise fund and in order to reduce the deficit and in order to see what effect that would have on the use of the Locust Street transfer station. The staff was concerned about that due to pre-purchase of bags, among other things. Any other comment you want to make? Sure, I, I can. I'll make it. Okay, I'll make a comment. Um, so there was considerable discussion at the last board meeting about what to do about the uh, the deficit and the solid waste enterprise fund. And the focus of the discussion was on whether or not to increase the vehicle permit fee, and also some discussion about whether or not to adjust the back fees. And uh, some of the staff comments relative to that included concern about raising a vehicle permit fee for fear of losing additional customers that use the facility, customers that may never come back if the city decided at some point to supplement the budget with general fund monies. So in a year or two, once you lose a customer, you may never get that customer back. So there was that sort of uh, concern. And there was also the desire to go through another calendar year, or another fiscal year, I guess, with out changing the bag fees so that we could get better data in terms of the bag sales. Because when we adjust, when we increased the bag fee um, a few months ago, it was a huge run on bags. So we have really no good data on how many bags people are using because people have got a lot of these bags in their basement um, and they're still kind of churning through them. So we felt like another year would give us would give us uh, better data in terms of the bag sales. And uh, considering that there is enough money in the solid waste enterprise fund to cover the deficit for at least a year, getting that additional financial data we felt would be beneficial to help make a decision in the future about which way to go. So at the last meeting, um, I think the board members that were present <coughs> Um, decided that they wanted to see a budget represented this evening with uh, keeping the fees as they exist today. If I get that right. Mm -hmm. And yes. Well, I, I had another consideration that came from that meeting, and that was uh, with the implementation of the new stormwater fee. That um, at least I think some of us considered this to be an appropriate thing to do, so that. The residents weren't um, impacted by uh, multiple significant fee increases this year. So that that affected our discussion and dis uh, and talk about the um, uh, water rates and the sewer rates as well as the solid waste. So all of those, because of the stormwater fees, it was a concern that we had in terms of the overall effect on the general. I recall <coughs> early discussions about holding back on more sewer rate increases because of the stormwater. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess reconsidering that, reconsidering the solid waste fee, mm -hmm. the, the sticker fee, uh, I, I thought we'd already made that decision to sort of hold back as much as we could on the water and sewer because we had um, anticipated the stormwater fee. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my other question is, is that are we measuring our solid waste only by the bag sale or do we do we measure it in some other way by the cost of the stuff that we haul away and have to pay for? Or are we only relying on the sale of the bags to measure the activity? Well, we, we certainly know what we haul to the landfill. Mm -hmm. So we have all those time records of the amount of material that we're handling. Um, but in terms of bag sales, there's, there's not a direct connection immediately between bag sales and what we're paying for at the disposal site. Because people, you pay in advance for disposal, right? I go to Cooper's, I buy a roll of bags. Mm -hmm. I buy a roll of 10 bags, I'm going to use a bag every two months. Those other bags which are prepaid for sit in my basement, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, the other 8,000 people. That yeah, use I guess the point I'm trying to make is, is that for us to tie, um, looking for additional data on bag sales to sort of help inform our decision making, I think might not be the best strategy because I do think there's that sort of randomness in terms of correlation between when you buy them. When, and when you use them. Yeah, I mean, we have no correlation at the moment. That's the problem. So if we went through a year, we felt like there would be more, you know, because if the price is the same, if the price for the bag doesn't change, mm -hmm. the chances that people are going to go out and buy a ton of these things and keep them in advance, you know, you, you get a little bit closer to the revenue and the expense lining up. And that's what we were looking for. But we made the decision that we weren't increasing the bag prices this year, right? 
Yeah. Right. We decided that the only change we were talking about was whether or not to increase the fee for access. Yeah. At the last the meeting, there was some discussion about raising the bag fee. At the meeting on the 16th? The meeting that you went oh, out sorry. in the morning, yeah. But that, that did come up again. Yeah. And previously it hadn't. Right. And it was in conjunction with the idea of increasing a lot of fees for the citizens. Mm -hmm. Gary? Well, I was just going to say, I, I'm not sure. I guess I was thinking maybe you weren't quite understanding that what we think happened is a lot of people bought bags at the lower price because we did raise the bag fee. A couple months. Two years ago. Yeah. Last yeah, it was year. Year. April last year. Last April. year. A year ago. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we we feel like we haven't seen the additional revenue from the new bag fee yet. That's I think that's really what the issue is. Mm -hmm. So there are people that they haven't been buying the is it three dollars a bag for the new bag? Big one. So there hasn't been a lot of sales of those because they, we think that people are still using the two dollar bags. So that's why we decided that we probably should wait before we start jiggering around with numbers and yeah. then we lose customers and then we never get them back and yeah, you know, that whole thing. I just think the annual fee is more of a marker about whether or not people will commit or not commit to us, whether or not they use the bags. So it feels like a much firmer metric. I, I think actually we agreed with that, that we were um, we would lose we probably lose some a significant number of customers. It's just really hard to know. And at least the bag fee is tied to use of items going into the landfill. Right. So mm -hmm. there's a usage. Somebody's landfill, not ours. Right. Not ours, exactly, <laughs> landfill in general. That's right. That's right. Well, it's a direct correlation of cost. Yeah. Yeah. Valley Recycling had two lines and six guys working Saturday morning. Does that mean you're not a customer anymore? Well, there's times when a big bag and a rubbish barrel is Oh man. A bunch of little blue ones. <laughs> I, have a, I have a sticker, don't worry. I have a sticker. I'm a participant. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dick. So, item four is approval of the 2015 solid waste industry budget, which is now at a deficit of $134,000 approximately. It's actually one, <coughs> 134,944. Thank you. So, you'd be approving a budget tonight of $551,944. Any further discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? I'm going to oppose that. Okay. All right. The motion passes. <coughs> Approval of the FY 2015 stormwater and flood control budget, budget with, which has some a minor issue. Yes. So, through the city ordinance, through the city council, we were basically held to a two million dollar budget. Our budget as it's going into our unit system will be at two million one hundred thousand six hundred and fifty six dollars. However, offsetting that will be the Federal Emergency Management Agency grant funding sources of one hundred and twenty thousand six hundred. So the total budget after the funding, uh, the grant funding will be one million nine hundred eighty thousand and fifty six dollars. Just want to make that clear that at the end of the day, we do have a budget that is under, under $2 million. Will that fee reimbursement come in the calendar of the fiscal year? Um, we believe it will start trickling in. That's correct. Um, all depends on how fast the projects move along. Okay. Any, any more discussion on the uh, approval of the stormwater and flood control budget? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Yes, sorry. I want to thank my staff of Henry Levy, Jim Lorla, Dave Letta, and Doug McDonald for all the hard work they put into these budget processes. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Sorry, we didn't have questions for you tonight. <laughs> hey, no problem. You must be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put all those folders back. Can I leave too? <laughs> All over this. <laughs> <laughs> Item number six is to schedule a comprehensive wastewater management plan subcommittee meeting to discuss alternative analyses. Three very ambitious board members uh, who shall be named right now so they can't hide. 
um, have been given copies of Task 9 of the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan. Uh, Gary, David, and Mike have offered to review that document, which is voluminous and filled with fun facts and information about various projects. Um, would like to keep the process moving with Kleinfelder to bring the CWMP process to a conclusion and uh, review and general acceptance of the information in Task 9 is an important part of getting to the end. Um, so we would like to schedule a meeting, probably be a four-hour meeting in the morning, maybe uh, sort of an 8 to 12 or 8 to 11 style meeting where we would go through uh, an overview of the information contained in Task 9 so that um, to the extent that uh, board members have questions, we can try to respond to those and Kleinfelder would also be at that meeting to help us with information. Um, there's a subsequent task associated with the CWMP that Task 9 is really the realm of all the projects that they've identified, improvements at the plant, improvements to the collection system, improvements to the pump stations that need to happen. There's a subsequent task that it helps us prioritize those into a multi-year capital plan, but this task at, at this point really is looking at the entire realm of improvements that they've identified that the city needs in the wastewater system. So that's a long way of asking whether um, people have availability in early May. Kleinfelder provided me with five possible dates, May 9, 12, 13, 14, 16 as possible morning meeting dates where their staff could come and have a discussion with us about the contents of that report. Well, I had a question. Um, might it improve the efficiency if our committee met with staff without the consultant first to get our heads into this? Sure. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, I'm a strong believer in repetition. <laughs> <laughs> What's me? Sure. Yes, sir. That sounds good. So, a, a day before you set the date with Kleinfelder. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, sure. So maybe we can pick both dates now. Mm -hmm. I mean, and if there's three of you, I need to post it. I, I think you need to post, post it, it anyway. Anyway. Yeah. 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 yeah we're posting everything. So. Yeah. So the choices were nine, May 9, 16? 9, 12, 13, nine, 14, 12. and 16. And actually, I didn't run those by Ned, so I want okay. those to post. So those are the meetings actually important that be there. Um, yeah. So those see, did, what, any one of those days is fine. Okay. With Kleinfelder. 12, 13, and 16. 12, 13, 14, and 16. 14, 16, 16. Okay. And May 9, 12, 13, 14, and 16. But you're free to have a meeting amongst yourselves in the gym anytime after 48 hours? 72. So 72. The first week of May would be best for that meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. um, like the first and second, or like the fifth through ninth? The week of the fifth. The, the week ninth. of the fifth. Yeah. I was just going to propose that we do a, well, I, this, these are the dates that they have available? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we don't want to take the ninth? Unless well, you don't want to use the ninth. <coughs> Can you do the week before? I could. Well, the week of the fifth is the same week. <coughs> You just be oh, right. <coughs> so sometime that week. Oh, that's fine. Yes. So we're just throwing another date in the show. I, mean, I think I could do any. Right I could do any morning, the week of the fifth, for our preliminary meeting. Mm -hmm. I can't do the sixth. They can't do what? You I can't. Can, do I the can't six. do May six, and I believe. Are you going out to the awards for water? Well, I can't do the sixth year. I've got at least two things, one of which I can't do as it is. So. Okay. okay. So, David, what, no, no, what's your pleasure? pleasure? I'm, I'm open for that week. The only day I'm not available is the 16th. Okay. okay. Towards the end. Okay. So, so, seven, eight, or nine? Does it matter to anybody? Seven or nine, I can't do eight. Seven or nine. Uh, I think that either one I could do. And if we want to reserve the night for Kleinfelder, then we should do the seven. Okay. Can you do two in one week? Seven and one is okay. Well, I can. I, I get paid to do two in one week. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gary? Uh, I actually would be a problem. Yeah, I was just thinking. How about 
we meet the seventh and we'll look at the following and sure. we'll the plan okay. mm -hmm. Look at the seventh, we'll drop the ninth and the sixteenth. So that leaves us with three, the twelfth, the thirteenth, and the fourteenth for the Klein Felder. David can't make the sixteenth. So what time do you want to meet on the seventh? We'll get that first. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is when we meet. So May seventh, eight o'clock for a in-house discussion. Yep. And then either the twelfth, the thirteenth, or the fourteenth with the meeting with Kleinfelder. Mm -hmm. Which would you guys like? I, I, Let's stay away from Monday. Okay, yeah. so the thirteenth. Thirteenth. Tuesday the thirteenth. Okay. okay. May thirteenth. Okay. Yeah. It works. It works? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm checking the conference room. <laughs> Getting our exercise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have two meeting dates set up. One in-house in May 7th at 8 o'clock and May 13th. Would that also be at 8 o'clock? Yes. Okay. And of course everyone's welcome to come. And read <laughs> Task 9. Task nine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where can we find Task 9? Uh, we have an electronic copy. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. That'd be drudgery. <laughs> we'll get that to you. Thank you. If you can read it, let me know what it says. <laughs> <laughs> I can read it. I don't know if I can let you know what it says. <laughs> Just check. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's item number six. Item number seven is schedule water assessment. Water Asset Management Plan presentation by Caden Howard. At, uh, in a pre at a previous meeting, we had a discussion about um, information contained in the Water Asset Plan that Caden Howard did for us, probably close to, I don't remember the date, it's been about a year since the report was done. We never had a presentation from Caden Howard about the contents of the plan. Mm -hmm. We are using the plan in um, some decision making about projects that we're looking at within the, within the water system. So. Um, some of the board members had a desire to have Tate and Howard come in, give us a presentation of the contents of the plan. Um, so I wanted to pick a, uh, have the board members pick a meeting date where they want to hear from Tate and Howard about the contents of the plan. Um, they were suggesting they wouldn't be available until June, I think, to come to a meeting. So if there was a meeting in June that you felt you wanted to listen to them for an hour, um, discuss the contents of their work, that would be, might be good. We have a preference on that. First meeting in June? The, ele the 11th would be the first meeting. And I will be on vacation. Maybe. Oh, that's that not good. So good. <laughs> oh, it would be perfect. <laughs> no, no. I think it would be perfect for you guys. <laughs> well, are you having a vacation at home and you can come to that meeting? In the negative. <laughs> um, uh, how, how long do you think the presentation will be due? Um, I thought about an hour. Or so 45 minutes with really question and answer, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it fits with a regular board meeting? I think so. Okay. The 25th? With that? 25th. Um, how important, I'm not sure I'll be here. How important is it that all the board members be here to, to see that? Oh, it might be. Oh, it might be. All right, I will be. So we'll see Anybody the else? <laughs> we'll say the 25th. The 25th. And we'll, we'll plan on a one hour item on the agenda. Yeah. Future is so busy. Okay. Um, Schedule for Forest Stewardship Plan for Robert's Meadow by Mike Mowry. So, um, so Mike Mowry is our forester. Uh, Mike presented the Forest Stewardship Plans for the, the city's uh, main reservoir uh, system previously. And Mike has also completed similar, similar plans for the Robert's Meadow system, which is our backup water supply. So the Upper Roberts, uh, Middle Roberts, and Lower Roberts Reservoir. We have stewardship plans for those properties that the city owns. And we wanted to have Mike come in similar to what we had done before and explain to the board what his findings were relative to the plans for the property that we own 
and what management actions, if any, um, we would be considering in the future in those watersheds. So that would be, you know, I don't know, half an hour. I forget how long Mike s spoke before, half an mm -hmm. hour, 45 minutes or something, but um, we wanted to have him come in and present the information to the board. Jim, is this a continuation of the plan that we all read a couple of years ago, or is it new aspects of the um, forestry plan? Forest um, it's a new area. All the work that we discussed before with the board was related to land that we own in, in Waitley and Williamsburg mm -hmm. and Hatfield, Connolly, and whatever. Um, and this is all property that we own within Northampton surrounding the Roberts Middle System. Mm -hmm. So it's new, a new so area. So it's all new. Yeah. So it might be continuation of the philosophy of the plan, but applied in a different way. Right. So um, if do we want to consider doing that on the first week in June? Since we're doing the Kate and Howard plan on June 25th? Or what's the pleasure of the board? Sometimes, then. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We have two meetings in May, May 14th and May 28th. We have Wayne Fighting coming on the May 14th. Yeah, that's right. Foggy Meadow Road? Yes. Meadow Road. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we want to do it on May 28th? Sure. Good. Is that everybody yep. okay with yep. that? Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So, item number nine Draft 2014 Street Paving List. Oh, hold up, Jim. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. Oh. Those Marys at work. Hmm? Those Mary Woods. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's be really careful. <laughs> and in conclusion, the <laughs> streets will be paving. Or do menace by your proof. So this uh, memo, which is relatively hot off the press, was um, written by David Willetter and myself relative to the paving plan. Uh, sorry. Is that extra? Yeah, sure. Do you want one to get one? Sure. Give me one. one. <laughs> 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 so, I don't want that one. Rich is going. No, I threw mine away. I think you probably need one, Rich. You think so? <laughs> I'll get you one. <laughs> Can you make a copy of that, Rich? That's okay. She's, she's getting all nervous on me here. Do you even have one? No. No. Yes. So uh, we've been working on a, on, a, on a paving list, Ned and I, our Rich Parcelletti and David Pauletti in engineering. Um, and at the previous meetings, the board has uh, expressed an interest in uh, seeing something written in terms of the rationale that we, we've been using to determine what the street paving list will be. So uh, in the process of um, preparing the list, which is sort of the second page here, and then there's some backup information from the VHB um, pavement management system that we've talked about quite often. Um, so I don't really like to spring a lot of information on you the night of the board meeting, and I was going to, I had originally planned on 30 minutes to talk about this, but I think what I'd rather do is um, have you take the memo and the information away, and, and we can put it on the agenda for the next meeting and talk about the information there, and then if you have questions beforehand, you can get in touch with me. Um, and we can, um, you know, we can go through it in, in a little more detail. Um, but essentially, uh, essentially, what we've, uh, I'll talk about this just for a minute without, without going into a lot of details. R Richie and I and uh, Ned and David met, and we looked at information within our uh, pavement asset management system that VHB has helped us with through the years. And then we looked at other information based on sort of on the ground um, review of the streets um, that Rich and Dave um, have done. 
and mad. I, I haven't driven, I only drive the streets, I drive on running errands. Um, but anyway, we, we used our our own information and knowledge of the streets in addition to the information in the asset management plan to come up with a pavement list. And we've got a budget of about $2 million this year um, where we think we can achieve a, a fair amount of uh, paving in some of the worst streets that you've probably loosened some teeth on yourself as you've been driving around. And the, the second page identifies the proposed uh, pavement um, contract that David's currently working on. And there's a variety of streets, uh, three that have been identified for the <coughs> overlay, two streets have been identified for reclaiming and, and paving. Um, under the contract term, we've got four other streets listed for mill and overlay, which would be um, basically the structure of a bid so that we could maximize the amount of $2 million without going over sort of a, um, a strategy in terms of bidding. Um, midway down the page, there's a rubberized chip seal contract proposed for Barrett Street. Rubberized chip seal, you may recall, is a pavement management um, treatment that we haven't used in the past, and we're talking to VHB about trying that um, on a street to see how it works and what the value is versus the benefit to the to the condition of the street over time. So we're we picked one street to do and, and see how that works out, and use that as a decision-making tool for um, possible use in the future. Um, the crack sealing contract is something that we've done annually and we'll continue to do that uh, to the tune of about $100,000 this year. And then at the bottom, uh, we have a box paving list of six streets that um, we've identified with Rich that the highway department uh, would tackle um, as the weather improves. So it's so sort of the, the, the list that we've come up with. And at the very bottom, we have a couple of utility projects that are underway. Woodmont Road, Force Main was replaced in December. Um, originally, that project was uh, bid as a permanent trench patch. And since that time, we've got a quote from the contractor to, to do an overlay of that street. And we've decided that it makes sense to do an overlay there to improve the condition of that street as we wrap up that job and leave. And we're also looking at uh, drainage improvements on Eastern Avenue. It's a project that we bid coming up in this fiscal year. And similarly, we looked at the, the price of a permanent trench patch versus doing an overlay in that street. And um, we've landed in the recommendation of an overlay for that street as well. So it sort of gives you an overview of, of what we're planning on. And I would just ask that you take a look at this information and we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting and be able to talk in more detail about um, the particular streets that were picked and some of the other things that were thought about. Um, Terry has left me, Terry uh, Colleen has left me a couple of messages about, you know, his desire to be able to explain to the public how we choose the streets that we choose. And we figured that this, something along the lines of this memorandum would be made available um, to the public so that they could see what, the, what our thought process is and how we pick the streets that we pick. But we have a very healthy budget this year of $2 million and a half a million dollars that did work with the mayor to get into the capital improvements plan clearly is a, you know, will be a great benefit um, to us as we, we start doing some of the pavement work later this year. I have a question. Um, it's a technical question. Can oh. you explain what bo box paving is? <laughs> uh, box, box paving is a process um, where we actually have, we have a bucket loader that has a specially designed box that is on the front of it and okay, we actually back the trucks it. up and yeah. it's about seven and a half feet wide yeah. and uh, we it's a temporary patch uh, system that we use to cover over places like uh, Sunset Hill and Burtsville Road which is about two years old so as you're making the approach coming up the hill on Sunset Hill that's very smooth there that was a troublesome spot we typically have used it in the past to alleviate I guess our pain in the department for operations to because we constantly going back to the same places year after year and if we can get these patches to last five years, then it adds life to the roadway and also takes our operations and pushes them off to other needed critical areas instead of spending like, for example, uh, you know, every time it rains now, there's potholes that just pop out on, on Woodlawn or Sylvester Road that constantly, you know, we, we just can't keep up with it anymore. So the box paving is designed to seal that basically and prevent them, give, give us some time until we can get to actually Either, uh, by, that by that time, it's usually full depth reconstruction. But 
Is this because you're anticipating more work on those roads in the future for utilities? Or? Well, typically when, when we go to pick these streets, I mean, the way that I was picking streets for box, well, the box building aspect of things previously was identifying areas that we expend a tremendous amount of uh, material and manpower. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that we designed this, put this together, um, was the box paving was in this list, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, was for streets that need attention now, but the $2 million or the blacktop contract that we would put out would not be able to cover it. So these are places that we can do ourselves to mm -hmm. um, alleviate some of the uh, problem areas and also, you know, a lot of resident concerns. I mean, we're getting calls constantly about these different locations and, you know, we have to address them. Um, so if we can do something temporary for them. I think that's true for most of them, but, you know, I think, really your comment about utilities and um, other factors that come into play in terms of which street ends up on what list. I'm thinking about the box paving on, on Audubon Road. We have a, a water line replacement project that may come up in the next few years on Audubon Road coming from the tank, and we may end up uh, doing that, you know, I, we haven't picked exactly what year, but it's a relatively high priority in the asset plan. So when we do that uh, water line replacement, we may choose at that point to do a mill and overlay. But for now, the street's in bad condition. If we can get another five years for something from the box paving, then it's, um, you know, it's sort of a utility factor that came in for that particular street as well. Um, if I could follow up on, on your question. I think that, Jim, you mentioned that um, something like this you were, you were considering making available to the public as, as, a, as a piece of general information. I think it would be useful um, if it's practical in each of these things because what this does is a narrative of, of the type of work that's going to be done in each category, but it doesn't really describe what, what, what the work is. Um, so that I think one sentence on that, and 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 an estimate of you know how long we think it works before something else will have to be done, temporary, you know, and maybe you do it in sort of a, a scaled thing, which is you know short term temporary, long term temporary, middle term, and you know full replacement kind of thing. Sure. Thanks. The other thing that just came up that's above and beyond this is that <clears throat> the state just came out with their pothole fix money. Mm -hmm. City's going to get about $151,000 towards that. Starting to have the conversations with staff as to how we might expend that because there are certain time frames that we have to expend the money by, get the invoices and pay the checks by. I think October 30th is a deadline date for reimbursements. But the state has to approve the projects in advance, so we're trying to figure out what is the best way to utilize that $151,000 going forward. But I'll just say, so you know, it's some additional money to our spies came in. Is that chapter 90, excuse me? It will be coming into the chapter 90 fund, but it's not chapter 90 funds. Because there's some emergency money released by the state. Okay. Throughout the whole state, and our share is 151. Which is pretty generous. Yeah. yeah. What about anybody else? Questions? Uh, I'm curious what the abbreviation stands for. I, I I know what PCI is and I know what AGT is, but I don't know what BCI, SCI, and BDOG is. Oh, that's a good question. BCI is benefit. Payment condition index. Yes, I have that one, and AGT is average daily trip. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, what are those again? PCI? PCI is payment condition index, <coughs> and AGT is average daily traffic. The B value on the end is the benefit value, which is a calculation of the factors that, that result in that benefit value. ADT is, I didn't hear that. ADT is every daily trip or traffic. Every daily traffic. Yeah, traffic. And B value is benefit value. Benefit. B value? Oh, B value there. Okay, got it. <coughs> then we must have Oliver Street must be a something nasty. I don't know what that is, but it's got a benefit value of 22.61. Is that good or bad? Is this a golf score or is this a baseball score? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that's oh, that's Blue Plains. That's not over there. Gotcha. That's an oddity. Is that a typo? <laughs> That's an oddity. That one showed up. It's only 709 feet. Yeah, it's right. not a very long stretch. 
Yeah. Alder yeah, Street is known as East Hampton Landfill, so I think it's a dirt portion of off of Park Hill Road in Northampton. So it's it's the Alder Street that's also in East Hampton. That's correct. Because okay. it goes all the way through through yeah. the woods. Yeah. Park Hill goes through the woods. Oliver goes down. Right, but they both go through wooded sections for the hidden other page road. So did we figure could out what BCI is? Maybe we could be provided with a explanation of these. You will. By email? Yeah. Before before the meeting. Yeah. yeah. Service commission base commission base. Oh. SCI? SCI? They, they could be base commission index and service condition index. Okay, great. Thanks. Not or it could be something else. Base condition. B value is benefit value. Yeah. That's correct. SCI is surface condition. That makes right. sense to me, but. Yeah, yeah except. And ADT again was average daily traffic. Yes. And SCI, it's surface condition. I would say it had to do with money. There are dollar signs. There are dollar signs there. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you very questions? much. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, that was really helpful. Mm -hmm. sure. I think it's yeah, great. It I'll thank and David. And it'll be on next week's agenda. So it will yep. be. Yep. I'll try it again. Yep. All right. The next four items could possibly be taken together. Set street acceptance hearing date for Orlando Drive, Village Hill Road, Moser Street, and Ford Crossing, which is all on Village Hill development. Um, so, Ned? I estimate it would probably take an hour for these hearings, probably 15 minutes at each one. Okay. It's supposed to be at the street, and there's portions of basically a lot of the streets up there that are built right now don't have any connection points. Now they do have connection points with Ford Crossing um, and uh, what is it's not Orlander, one of the streets up there. But anyways, yeah. is Annie. So you have a lot of these interconnections now happening that are 200 feet long or 150 feet long. And then Moses Street itself is the entire section of Moses Street. Okay. So I figure if we have an hour up there on the hill before a board meeting or at your leisure on a Saturday, can knock this whole thing off. Where are these coming from? Pardon me? Where are these coming from? These are coming through the developer mm -hmm. uh, to the city council, being referred down to the Board of Public Works and planning board, just like our private ways hearings are. These plans, are, the streets are all built, they're constructed, all new utilities, pavement, and they're going through the subdivision process rather than the private way process that we've been doing lately. There's been at least four that I can think of that we've accepted up there mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. You did Orlander, you did part of Moser, you did part of Village Hill so far, and part of Musani. Okay. So these are, like I said, other moving pieces of it, interconnection points. And you have to give us time to send out the notices to right. be a butter to that. Oh, a month of hours. Fine. A month? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have to so, get certified letters. Okay. So any preference on before a board meeting or on a Saturday? Before a board meeting. Now that it's late. Mm -hmm. Now that it's late. <laughs> like 4 o'clock someday. Sure. You okay. give us plenty of time. 28? 4.15. Anybody want to propose a date? So May 14th. May 14th, you have a claims committee meeting at 5.15, just so you're aware of that. Yeah, so I think that's not a good day. Okay. May 28th. May 28th. May 28th. give you enough time. We have a special presentation that meeting. Is that not? No. Yeah. We do have a special presentation. Yep. Yes, you yeah. should do. Yeah. And to get the trees. trees. Oh, trees that night. Okay. Yeah. We can work them both, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yep. So May 28th, 4.15. 4.15. Is there a particular so street where we want to meet? Good point. No, no, thank you. We'll set, we'll set the schedule up for you. Okay, and then tell us where yep. it's going to be. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. So May 28th, 415, Village Hill. And I suppose we can't have ask for a rain day, huh? I'm just kidding, you know what happened. <laughs> no, just <laughs> left it public. <laughs> we don't care. Let it rain, let it snow. Yeah, we go out. see the drainage work. 
right. And you can get back here. We should the last one will be at five yeah. o'clock. I mean, who cares about sunshine? Please. They start at four fifteen. You have fifteen minutes each one. You'd be ending at five fifteen. We're just giving fifteen minutes to come back for the board meeting for Is that five minutes. I think it's okay because we don't have fun. plans that night. And they're not going to start without us. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Contract for the purchase of watershed land in Wadley on Williamsburg Road containing 3.7 acres in the amount of $65,000 from the Water Enterprise Fund. Move approval. Second. Wow, that pretty much describes it, Ralph. Um, this is, a, this is a, a purchase and sale agreement with a private landowner for a parcel of land that's 3.7 acres. Um, in executive session back in June of 2013, the board had voted um, uh, to make an offer for $65,000 for the property, which is uh, what the appraisal value for the, for the piece of property was. It's actually a pretty important piece of land. I don't have a, a handout for you, but this little property here circled in red is the piece of property that we're discussing and it's pretty much across the street this is the West Whateley Reservoir there and the Ryan Reservoir here so pretty important piece of land right near the reservoir so um, we felt it was an important acquisition for the city in terms of watershed protection and um, uh, as the board had recommended we made an offer and the, the landowner has accepted the offer um, for 65000 so now we're just at the point where we have a purchase and sale agreement that needs approval. And also about Sanderson for a break in the tributary. Does, yeah. Any discussion? Could you remind us uh, about the topography and the developability of this piece of land? Sure, the, the parcel has front on Williamsburg Road um, and it's, va it's, it's vacant and forced right now and I think um, because it had frontage it would be um, potential for building a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Thank you. Also, Sanderson Brook runs through the property, which is the main tributary to the West Whitney Reservoir. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have questions? I just had a quick question. Um, who's the landowner? Um, Galunka. Yeah, James Galunka and Janice Galunka. James and Janice Galunka? Right. G O L. Oh, NKA. Okay. Wow. Cool. Okay. All those in, uh, in favor of approving this contract? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Contract for design services for the concrete mm -hmm. Pleasant Street to okay. Mount Tom water main replacement project to tie in bond in the amount of $44,400 from the water enterprise fund. Move approval. Second. Before we start discussion, um, status of my employment is over at tie in bond, but I haven't had any discussions regarding whether or not that means I can start to participate in um, discussions. And so I'm going to recuse myself just to be on the safe side okay. and leave the room and okay. let you do your thing. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Thought he'd never leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, this project is uh, uh, the roundabout project at Cons Pleasant and Mount Tom Road is being designed by Niche Engineering in Boston for Mass Drive. Right? That's correct. So uh, one of the priority projects for water line replacement in the Payne and Howard water asset plan was to upgrade and replace the water line in, in the vicinity of that roundabout. So the contract with Time Bond is for the design of the water main that would be bid as part of the mass dock project and paid for, the water line would be paid for using water enterprise fund money. So it's uh, uh, the design would be about 1,200 linear feet of 12-inch uh, uh, water main. So we had issued an RFP um, for this work. We sent it to five firms. Um, we received proposals from three firms. Um, uh, tie and bond, the contract that's before you tonight, was 44400 Tate and Howard had submitted a proposal for 48100 
and what if McCarran had submitted a proposal for $90,699? Well, six, <laughs> um, so the time bond proposal was, was responsive and um, we have a tight schedule um, on this project in order to meet the mascot requirements for the roundabout design as a whole, uh, which is why it came up as a last minute uh, contract in front of the board tonight for approval. Mm -hmm. Can you tell them about meet the schedule? Okay. Is anybody else curious as to why the last firm whose name I didn't catch was twice as much? You know, to be honest with you, I didn't scowl their proposal to figure it out because I really don't care. Yeah. That's <laughs> 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 it's a good use of your time, good judgment. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. the mess, the pyramid, I mean, to have three bids. I mean, contractors know that we want three bids, so they will sometimes put in a bid even though just shoot not it, expecting Just shoot to it get across, it. Yeah. yeah. And hope for an accident. <laughs> well, and, and so, <laughs> well, no, <laughs> if you respond to their bids, even though you don't always get their bids, so when you need bids, you get your on the list to respond to bids. You know, yeah. I, I'll say in defense of Woodard and Karen is a firm, we did something similar to replace the Woodmont road force main coming from the Bradford Street pump station. Mm -hmm. We were in a big rush to replace it at the end of the fall into the winter mm -hmm. last year and Wood and Karn submitted a very, very quick proposal mm -hmm. for the work. It was very cost effective. They did a terrific job on the on the design and, and construction oversight of that. So as a firm we're really happy with the work they did on that job. This one clearly the price wasn't one we were interested right. in. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think that Mike can sign this one. Yes, he can. Oh, right. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Mike. <laughs> you listening? We can hear you. <laughs> you listening to us? Maybe he would know the answer on why they're good in front of you guys. Yeah. How many copies in the This is four. <laughs> All right. Uh, trench permits and inspections. I received a call. Well, at the last couple of board meetings, there, there have been a few um, comments relative to the condition of city streets and patches that are done by contractors and, and what we do to enforce conditions of the trench permit and that sort of thing. And I had, uh, so that's come up in the board meeting. I also received a call from Terry who was asking about what we've done. And about a year ago, we, I had a fair amount of discussion with him about the trench permit process. And we spent some time, uh, we being mainly Richie and, uh, and David Bolletter and engineering and Ann Pavier to um, rewrite it, the permit application that we have for trench permits. And we did a lot of work. And I think the trench permit application and process itself um, was improved a lot, but we never really circled back to the board to let you know what our decisions were about the permit process and what the permit application looked like and the sorts of things that we do day to day. Um, it's a lot of detail, maybe more in some regard than the board would typically want to know, but I think given the condition of the streets and the trench patches and the fact that these things keep coming up, what we wanted to do is at a future board meeting, maybe the next one, is to come in and have a discussion about um, sort of our feedback once we issue a trench permit application, how we go back and inspect those and enforce the conditions of the permit. Because that's um, that's has been a challenge, I think, for the department through the years in terms of manpower and how we enforce the conditions of the uh, the trench permits in a, in a systematic, meaningful way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something that we're still working on, but uh, I told Terry I'd let the board members know what would have on a, on a future meeting soon be able to talk about those issues. I guess you better make sure that Terry Terry's here. Be there. <laughs> yes. I'll check with Terry. I missed him tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you want that on the next meeting? Let me check with Terry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chris, do you have anything? I noticed that there's a, um, a public meeting notification out in front of the mascot uh, facility. Yeah down the down the hill there okay. um, about it, I stopped to read it today it, it's about site remediation and they use the phrase um, return to conditions prior to blah 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 which it sounded to me was a pretty ambitious project 
But the state is going to do it. They're capping their landfill, yeah. their solid waste facility. Quote Actually, unquote. I don't know if they're capping it. Oh, okay. I don't think they're capping it. But that, that uh, the, the application that's posted up front there is for their uh, Conservation Commission meeting. Meeting, which is tomorrow out. night. Right. Yeah. I think they're proposing removal of the waste okay. from the site, which is different. Originally, they had planned on capping it. Right. But the last document I saw from them showed that they wanted to, uh, to excavate some of the landfill material and remove it from the property. It's pretty wet back there, so, and I, I'm not familiar with all the plans, but I assume if they remove the waste and it's very wet, that some of the, that area will be returned to a, a wetland type environment, would be my guess. But that would be for the commission to work out. Would there be a resumption of negotiation between the city and the state if this happened? Uh, re about um, taking over that land? Because wasn't that the land that this that was negotiated that the city would take, but the city was, or the previous mayor and the current mayor was concerned because of the remediate, potential remediation dangers? Future liabilities and obligations attached to it? The mayor was concerned about that? Yes. There's still the building down there that needs to be removed at some point by someone also in the future? Mm -hmm. So this is really just a first step and still doesn't make an attractive piece, is what you're supposing. I think it would be an attractive piece for the DPW at some point, no matter what the cost is going to be in the future. Okay. We had a lot of concerns about liability, and I, I think once the site is cleaned up and they're done what they're doing, um, it doesn't seem like it would be sort of the sole source negotiation with the city about whether we wanted it. It might be just a process they go through to get rid of property that they no longer want to own. So, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay. It'll be at least, my guess is it'll be at least a year away before they get done doing what they want to do out there. Anything else, Chris? Nope. Okay. Um, could we get a copy of um, Dick's Public statement. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. DJ? I'll start. Thank you. I just wanted to, I think, is tomorrow night for Pulaski first? Oh, good point. Thanks, Sandy. Okay. Yeah. It's like I don't have to say this because Jim will bring it up. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll defer to you. <laughs> the first workshop for the uh, Pulaski Park renovation design is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. Um, it's going to be a design charrette style workshop, so people that come can look forward to working with markers and um, site plans to be able to sketch out what their thoughts are. Um, so they'll be, Stimson will be breaking people into smaller groups to try to get people's input by having them mark on site plans and that sort of thing. So. We're pretty excited about it. We're hoping people will turn out. There was an article in the Gazette that Chad Kane wrote. Uh, I think it was in yesterday's newspaper. So, um, anybody planning on coming from the board? Be curious. Well, I was planning on it, but it's not likely now. I was planning, but I have a seven o'clock contracting and procurement workshop I have to go to. I wasn't planning, but I might attend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I totally had it in my in my list, but. Sort of inundated at work. Okay. Yes, yeah. If I could circle back, there was one thing I forgot to mention was on the. Are we finished? Can we just yes. make sure? Are we finished with the Pulaski Park? Did anybody else want to say if they were planning on I'm not showing you the 7 o'clock Can you come for the first hour? Would that be valuable? Anytime. Okay. I'll come. Sure. I'll it'd come be, for the. It'd be great. Okay. And then the second and third workshops as well will be yes. equally as important, I think, for people yeah. if they're in the lake. So. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, That's okay. I'm sorry to go backwards on you. Um, on Tuesday, April 29th, from 7 to 8, there is a meeting uh, held by Wayne Fighton down at 118 Con Street looking at futures of the Pleasant Street corridor. Mm -hmm. The um, date and time again, please, ma'am? Uh, it is Tuesday, April, tw April 29th. I have it from 7 to 8, but it actually might be 7 to 9. And it's at 118 Con Street. What 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 is that that address? Or would this 118 Con open? Street. It's across from the Salvo House. It's where the proposed marijuana dispensary is going to be, next to the dialysis center. Oh. Hmm. 
And it's the future chance. of the Con Street <laughs> Corridor? Is that what Pleasant, 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 Pleasant Street, Street Corridor. Long Range Planning. Yeah, I think we got a notice about this. I'll send out the flyer to the board. I if you didn't receive it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I might have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> MJ, I'm good. Okay. I'm all set. Move to adjourn. Oh, we need somebody else. Uh, the department is uh, doing its annual Arbor uh, Arbor Day whip giveaway on Friday and Saturday, depending upon supplies last. So. And what does whip mean? Uh, uh, Little trees. Oh yes, thank you. <laughs> Small trees, bare root trees, <laughs> that, uh, are given away to residents that. Uh, come, you know, use a transfer station or residents that just show up. So right. there's a uh, tulip poplar, uh, Colorado blue spruce, and red maples this year. Oh, Honor cool. of each, so first come, first serve. Tulip poplar, poplar. Yes. Colorado blue spruce. Yes. And what was the other? Uh, red maple. Red maple. Richie, I had a woman call me today and ask if she can have more than one. She goes uh, to the back of the line. That's a tall order. I, I mean, you, are they I, you giving one per? Usually resident. one per household or one okay. per person. But if okay. they're if they come back, the following a lot day, of people. Still, How many are you giving away total? Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred. First come, first serve. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's Friday. Yes, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. Yep. Gonna be staffed by David Lucy on Friday, <laughs> I believe, with uh, Lily Lombard, and I'm not sure who is working on Saturday. The guy, that cut, down all those trees, the guy huh? that cut down all those trees is not giving them away. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> full it's circle. Of life. Full he's circle. He's having a lot of remorse in his uh, retirement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, move to adjourn? Yes. So moved. All right. All right. All right.